Well, everyone, this is the day the Lord has made, and of course, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. My name is Dr. Alfred Craig, and I am so excited about being with you today because uh, God has great things in store tonight. You know, I'm glad to be with you on Bible study. For you that do not know me, I'm Dr. Alfred Craig, and it's good being live with you, praise God, on Facebook. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endures to all generations. Praise God. Now, we've been coming on every Thursday night at 6.30 to share with you some great things that God has been sharing with me. You know, I've been in ministry for 40 years now. You know, I actually started ministry December the 26th, 1976. That's right, December the 26th, 1976. And, <clears throat> and you know, I remember on Christmas Day, uh, everybody else was having a good Christmas. Then I was out there passing out flyers, praise God, to get my... Big church going. <clears throat> First Sunday, five members, glory to God. <clears throat> but you know what? Since then, because I understood that God had a call in my life, and I didn't understand all that, it was, that, 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 that was involved in that, but I did believe God had a call in my life. And so for a lot of years, I just kind of, I did what they said, just do whatever your, your, your hands find to do. And so, but you know what? But back in 1988, I was in a camp meeting with a, <clears throat> under a gentleman by the name of Kenneth E. Hagan there in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And he began to prophesy, and he began to talk about, uh, about change and change and change. He said that just one change you're going to make in your life is going to cause your ministry to leap forward. And when he said that, it's like the Spirit of God drops out of my hair spirit. He said, that's what you need. <clears throat> you need a change. And uh, he said, just a small change. And so for, my, for me, that change was, you know, uh, uh, going to ministry school. Back, this, is back in, uh, and this is back in 1988. And, you know, and change is tough. But like some people said, you know, said change is not change until you change. Are you following me? <clears throat> so, you know, for the first, so for two years there, I kind of fought into my spirit because of the sacrifice that was required for me. Because I was living in Arizona at that time. And to go to school there on the Kenneth Hagin was going to require me to go all the way to Oklahoma. It was going to cause me to let my business go, let my churches go that I had at that time, and go and get some training. And so it was challenging for me. But I, I just sensed in my spirit what God called me to do. Well, between 1988 and 1990, I kind of like floated, you know, knowing what God has said, but yet not really willing to make a sacrifice to obey, to fulfill that call in my life. But, you know, uh, as, uh, finally in 1990, uh, some magazines came to my house, and uh, on the magazine were some graduates of, of ministry school there at Kenneth Higgins, uh, Raymond Bible Training Center, and the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and said, you know, that was supposed to have been you. You know, and I, I convicted my heart. That was supposed to have been me. <clears throat> so what I did from that point on, I just said, okay, God, I talked to my wife about it. I said, we need to go ahead and go to ministry school. We, we, we <clears throat> placed our churches in someone's hands. We placed uh, the business in someone's hands, and we took off with Oklahoma. <clears throat> well, while I was in Oklahoma, I would be praying every day, go to school five days a week, listen to the word during that time. It was Word of Faith school. And then I would pray every day and just say, God, no matter what you have for my life from this point on, I just want to know that I'm called to do it, and I want to make sure that I'm anointed to do it. You know words, I don't want to just spend the next, because at, at that time it had been 15 years almost, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> and I did not want to spend the rest of my time struggling like I had spent the first 15 years, kind of like doing what my hands finally do. I want to know what my call was. And it was during that time that I was praying, the Spirit of God put something in my heart. He said this, he says, you came here to Oklahoma out of obedience to me, but I'm sending you back to the state of Arizona. And I want you to start a ministry training school like the one you have, you're going to right now. And then from that point, I want you to establish churches throughout Arizona, United States, and the world. Well, I knew that was, uh, you know, that was my call. See, a call is not just, you know, you're hearing God say, Alfred. No, a call is an assignment. You know, whether it's urging in the church, whether it's singing in the choir, a call is an assignment. You know, it's more than just, you know, doing something that you want to happen. And so I, I started that back in 19, uh, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, <clears throat> excuse me. So what I ended up doing is during that year while I was at Raymond there in Oklahoma, the Lord spoke to me again while I was in prayer. He said, all right, now I want you to go to Crenshaw Christian Center there in, Tol in, there in Los Angeles, California, <clears throat> and I want you to go to uh, Apostle Frederick K.C. Price. At that time it was called Dr. Price, but now it's Apostle Frederick K.C. Price. And I want you to go there to that school there because there you want to be able to learn there in an in, in, in a, in a, in a, in a inner city community how people with skin like you, as colored like you are, uh, uh, that can make it happen even no matter where you're at, no matter what kind of your skin color. So thank God I went to, you know, obey God, 
went to the Crenshaw Christian Center there in, in, uh, in Los Angeles, California. And as I was there, it was like my whole world lit up. I mean, the teaching there was so powerful. The instructors was so, so powerful. And I saw the dialogue setting. I got a chance to, you know, to, to listen to Apostle Price teach up close, you know, and really get an understanding of faith. I got a chance to listen to all the class they had during that time. And really during that time, I began to understand that this is what my call was. And what I did, God put in my heart, he said, take this school, this school right here, the, 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 the way this school is organized, and I want you to take this school the way it's organized and the way that the, the concept that it has, take that around the world. And so I, you know, I, I obeyed that also. And uh, at the school was called Crenshaw Christian Center Ministry Training Institute, MTI. And so all I'd done, my, the church at that time was called Azusa. I just said Azusa MTI. I didn't want to change anything because my assignment was to take the word of God uh, and, and, the, and, 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 the, and the way the, the, the school was there at Crenshaw and take that around the world. And so we started that in 1993 with about 25 students. And, uh, you know, from that point, we, went, you know, uh, we, we graduated in the last 25 years since then, probably with 3,000 students in Arizona and uh, probably about 10,000 students uh, around the world. You know, beginning there in Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Nigeria, uh, London, England, all over the place. Now, and I don't know where it's going right now because many of the people have taken the school and they multiplied it, praise God, and it's just exploding around the world, glory to God, because I found out what my call was. Are you following me? And my call now is to you. Many of you that are online with me right now, you kind of position where I was years ago. And maybe you're like, you know, need to know the first beginning of your call or you're midways and smack you, you know, you kind of plateaued and said, what do I do now? Well, that's all right. That's all right. Because God has a plan for your life. God has a future for you. And you, and you, let me take, can I say something to you right now? You are equipped. Because, you know, when I first got to start a school, I had never started a school before. I had no training how to start a school. I, you know, I didn't even know nobody really person that had a school. But I, 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 what I've done, I took the notes that, that I got from Dr. Price, the notes I got from Kenneth Davis School, and I started my school with their notes. Praise God. Are you following me? I had the calling and assignment. But the Bible says, be followers of those who through faith and faith inherit their promises. I know uh, Apostle Price and uh, 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 Prophet Kenneth Hagin, they could obtain the promises concerning what, what I was doing and what, what God had called me to do. I just followed them. As the Bible said, be imitators of them. And so I was not trying to reinvent anything. I was just trying to obey God. And so I want you to know the same thing about you today, is that you are already qualified. You are qualified for the call God has for your life. Are you a father? You are qualified right now for the exact call. So it's not a matter of you trying to get qualified. God told Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1, verse 4 and 5, he said, Before I formed you in your mother's belly, I knew you. And before you came forth out of her womb, I sanctified you and ordained that you were going to be a prophet to the nations. So you came out of your mother's womb sanctified. And you came out of your mother's womb called of God. You came out of your mother's womb equipped of God. Are you following me? It may be in miniature, my new form right now. Maybe it, you know, it needs to grow and mature. But you are qualified, hallelujah, for the call of God that he has for your life. You know, what we do is we just got to water that, okay? Now, so let me show you this. Look what Jesus Christ did. Let me, let me say this. Let me, let me make this point then. Whom God calls, he qualifies. You're called. You know, uh, uh, no one puts someone on the football field and without, uh, uh, without a uniform. If you go in the uniform, you see somebody out there with just shorts on and they get ready to play a game. You say, what, that person don't have no equipment on. Are you following? No. The, when, you get into the, when you go in the field, the, it is responsibility of the owner of that team to provide your equipment. Are you following me? Amen. So uh, that's what God is. God's called you, therefore God has equipped you. He's not put you out in the field without no equipment. Glory to God. So you are called and you are equipped. Look, look what Jesus Christ said. If you have your Bible with me, it's the book of Matthew chapter 10 and verse number 1. And we're going to begin right there. Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. And we can see that Jesus Christ, he called his disciples. And then he, he transferred them from just being a disciple to an apostle, which means the sent one, okay? Look what he says here in Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. He says this, And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits. Can you see that? Against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all matter of sickness and all matter of disease among the people. Isn't that beautiful? So we can see here that Jesus gave them power. That means equipment. That means authority. That means ability. He gave them power 
against unclean spirits. He knows that, they were, that, that people were going to be possessed with devils. So he, he did not send them out there powerless or, 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 or without authority. And he says, I'll give you power to cast them out. Not just tolerate the devil. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. He said, then I'll, I'll give you power also to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease in the, in, in the lives of the people. So you have that same power. You have that exact same power. In Mark, in Mark 16, we're not going to go to there, but Mark 16, verse 17, Jesus, Baba said that Jesus Christ, uh, verse 15, he said, go into all the world and preach the God to all, every creature. And then he, in verse 17, he says, in my name, you will cast out devils. You will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. He said, these signs are going to follow the believers. Every person that, I, that becomes a believer, I'm empowering you to lay hands on the sick again and cast out devils. Are you following me? So you are equipped right now. Amen? And, and, and sometimes we need the confidence in, in the power and to understand how to operate the power, which is you know, nothing wrong with that. But I want you to know you are called and you are equipped for the office God has called you into, whether it be an usher, you can be the most anointed usher there you've ever seen. You can be a, a sing, singer, anointed of God, pastor, a prophet, a evangelist, pastor, a, a teacher, whatever God's called you to be, you are equipped. Amen. Praise God. That's why Paul told Timothy, he says, stir up the gift of God. They said, you just got to get the flame back going again and begin to stir the thing back, get your prayer life going back again, dedicate yourself to the things of God and begin to put a demand on that call that God has for your life. Amen. Notice what Jesus Christ also said in the book of Luke, the book of Luke here, chapter number 10 and verse 19. But look here again, Jesus is going to talk to his disciples again. And we can see that Jesus Christ constantly said, all right, I'm sending you out. But I'm not sending you out without equipment. Luke chapter 10 verse 19 he says this. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So look what he said again. I'm giving you power. Now that word power there means authority. That means like a policeman. But, uh, they do not send the policeman out there without uh, authority. Because you may deal with people that are speeding, may deal with people that you know that are that are breaking the law that you need to arrest. Are you following? You don't want to go out there and say, "Well, I'm just a citizen 